Now, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can create this beautiful login controller inside this project. I'm going to show you how you can validate the input of the user login inside this project. So let me just back to my router and you can notice here, I have the type of request which is get. Now when you make a login, that is not a type of get request. That is the post request. You're posting a data to the server so the server can authenticate the user. So instead of get, here I'm going to change the get request and specify here post. And this time I'm going to post some data with this request. I'm going to leave everything as it is, save this file back to my controller and here I'm going to create this controller. So just up here, I'm going to first get the data from the user when the user make a post request. So here I'm going to create a command and say get user data. So just down here, I'm going to say constant or you can create a late variable as well. I'm going to create here a constant variable and say here in the object email and password and I'm going to get these values from request.body. As you know, in the previous lecture, we understand how you can get the values from this request.body object. When you make a post request, we're going to pass data to this body and I'm going to get that data inside this variable using the structuring feature of JavaScript. Now, just for that, I'm going to just print both these values as a response. Instead of this message, here, I'm going to simply say email and password. That's it. Just for that, let me put this statement inside try and catch block. So at the top, I'm going to say here, try and catch. Inside this catch, here I'm going to simply say response dot status. And this is a type of 500 status. And then I'm going to send a JSON data with it. So I'm going to say here JSON. In the object, I'm going to specify error, the key. And then I'm going to specify here error message. So I'm going to first print the system error. So I'm going to say here error dot message. And if I don't have any value inside this message variable, I'm going to specify default value error while login. Just for that, I'm going to grab this statement and put that inside this try block. So if there is any error inside this try block, I'm going to call this error message. Now, just for that, let me first test this endpoint. Save this file back to my API testing tool. And this time, I'm going to make a post request on the endpoint login. Now, with this login, as you can see, to this body, I'm going to pass two values, email and password. So I'm going to get rid of this username and check password right from this JSON, just like this. And then I'm going to click on this send button. When I click on the send button, you can notice I'm going to get my values as a response. Because we just specify here a response with a JSON and we have the input values as a response. Just like that, let me validate this request. So inside this try block, here I'm going to add a comment and say, validate request so here i'm going to say if i don't have any value inside this request.body variable i'm going to execute this if statement and just return a response with the status code 406 and then i'm going to return a json data with it inside this json i'm going to pass an object and specify here error and i'm going to specify here error which is going to be you have to fill the email and password field. So I'm going to just see here email and password. That's it. Just for that, let me just exit from this method using return statement. Just down here, let me validate this user input as well. So just down here, I'm going to say validation. And here I'm going to say if, if you don't have email or if I don't have password in the request, I'm going to simply return a response dot status status is going to be 406 and then i'm going to return a json data and this is going to be the error so i'm going to specify err and in the double quote i'm going to say not all fields have been entered that's it now let me just save this file and open my postman testing tool and now let me just check this validation what if i get rid of this email right from here and if i make this request I'm going to get an error message. Not all fields have been entered. Let me do the same thing for this password. If I get rid of this password and make this request, I'm going to get this same error because we have the empty password filled here. Now, just for that, as you know, inside your package.json file, we have a different scripts. When you want to start your backend server, you need to execute this server command. And when you want to start 
the client server, you need to execute this start command. Now what I want, at the same time, I want to start my backend server as well as my client server. To do that, I can use a simple module called npm run all. Using npm run all module, I'm going to start the client and the backend server at the same time. Let me show you how you can do it. So I'm going to open my terminal. Let me just stop the development server. And right now I'm going to install a module npm i for install. And then I'm going to specify a module name npm run all. And then I'm going to specify here hyphen d to install this module as dev dependency. Now, once you have this module, let me clear the screen, close this terminal. And you can notice here to start the React application, you just simply say here npm start. And this command is going to start and execute this start script. Just like that, as you know, to execute the server, you just simply specify a command npm run server. So this statement is going to call this server command. Now what I want, I'm going to combine both these statements into one. So just out of this server right down here, I'm going to create another script and I'm going to name that start react. And then I'm going to specify here a script. So I'm going to copy this start script and specify that here. And instead of this start script, I'm going to specify here a module npm run all. Then I'm going to specify here a flag call parallel. I'm going to execute this script parallel one by one. So here I'm going to first start my server and then start the client server. So I'm going to first specify here server. Inside the server, as you can notice, I'm going to have a script nodemon server and server.js file. And just out of that, I'm going to specify this start react script just after this server like this. Let me save this file. And now let me just execute a command here, npm start. When I press enter, this will just start the server as well as my client development server. You can notice. So as you can notice, you can start your client and the development server at the same time. Just after that, once you've done that, just back to your controller. And as you know, inside your controller, you have here a password field inside your login and inside your registration. Now what I want, I want to store this user password in a hash value. I want to secure the user password. So in the next lecture, we're going to see how to hash this password.